I'd just like to introduce myself. I'm Tommy Rose. Uh, How are you doing, Tommy? Pleased to meet you. Nice, nice to meet you too. Um, I'd just like to ask you a few questions. Um, how did you first get involved in drama and directing? It, in, I got involved in drama in school. Like a lot of schools, they have their own groups and they have their own put on a play once a year. And it led from there, then I came back and I was teaching and part of teaching is drama as well. So. Um, I did a bit of acting and then I went into directing as you get older you tend to, to go that way. So it's, it's been a kind of a process on and on, year after year, mm. and it, it doesn't stop. I suppose my first introduction to acting was I had a number of friends who were involved in backstage theatre group and they just asked me to come up and see could I help um, just setting up a play. I wasn't acting in the play. and I got the grand title of assistant stage manager. So that was really my first introduction, but uh, assistant stage manager is doing all the pulling, all the dragging, putting up sets, painting sets. So that really was my first introduction to, to, to acting. And it was a great kind of foundation because you, you saw what was happening behind the scenes. You saw people going on stage. So I suppose that's kind of the first introduction. And that's what we got me um, introduced to acting. I was then subsequently asked, well, have you ever done it before? And I said no, so I tried it. And that, that's, but I had the grounding of, of seeing what happened. I wasn't a total novice. Yeah. Well, the first, the first play I was ever involved in was when I was going to school, many years ago, back in the, in the 1970s. We did a school play called Zigger Zagger, which was uh, set against the backdrop of the soccer matches. Oh, really? Soccer matches in England. And that was my first performance, and I've been at it on and off over the years since. <laughs> I was probably quite late coming to acting. I think the first play that I was involved in was, I was only about tender age of 25, so I'm, I was quite old coming to acting. A lot of people would have done it in school, a lot of people would have perhaps tried it in youth groups and stuff like that. But no, I hadn't any formal acting experience before that, so I had quite a late starter. Uh, can you tell us a bit about the process of this play? The process, uh, or, or the main story of the play basically, it's the man who has a possession, who owns something, and somebody wants to take it away from him. And that's where all the, the twists and turns come within the play. You see a son, you don't hear the story of the son that died earlier on in the play. You, 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 there's mention to him, one of the sons committed suicide, but that doesn't come into the play. Um, so the other son is, he's not what the father wanted. He's not as strong a, a, an image as the father wanted. But they've worked this field, they've worked this possession, and now it's going to be taken from mm. them. So basically that would tell a story in itself. Suppose there's other figures. There won't be any other figures. I'd see to that. Ah, this village is related to me. And then the reason is related to the wife. And the outside. Well, it's a hot place for the Fuck outsiders! What experience did you gain in the play? Um, somebody said to me after the play that, um, and it, I suppose it's current at the moment, we all know the, 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 uh, the adverse publicity there's been about property developers and people building houses and buying land and just putting up houses and putting up apartment blocks that were totally unnecessary. Mm -hmm. And the bull McCabe, you know, somebody said to me afterwards, do you know, he, maybe he had a point. <laughs> okay, you know, he was a nasty character. But you could see that there, look, the love of the land and, you know, the, the, the affinity that Irish people have with the land. Um, I suppose I always knew that, but it was probably reinforced with me after the play, you know. He didn't want concrete poured in this field. No. There's not any amount of fields out there you can pour concrete. It was his field. He had work with this. So, and it did strike a note. It did strike a chord, today, I think, with people, you know, given the current climate there is. Yeah. Well, what do you think are the main themes of the play? It, it's, there's greed. There's also belonging to a place, belonging to something, have something that you, you possess and own and see it taken away from you. There was yeah, being a director, it's, it's, it's fun in, in many ways. It's, it's hard work in the sense of time. 
that you have to prepare, you have to take the play, you have to cast the play, you have to look at the technical end of the play, what lighting you're going to use, what sound effects you're going to use. All that has to be put into one package. But usually you have somebody which you call a producer, mm -hmm. and the producer will get all the things. We say you need furniture, you need chairs, tables. It's his job or her job to do that and work in, in conjunction with the stage manager. Uh, was it hard to act in the field? I suppose there's always a degree of difficulty in acting in any play, but I suppose in relation to the field, um, it wasn't my first play, in fact I'd done many plays, so you develop a kind of a confidence, you kind of develop uh, an assurance. The other thing I found about in the field is that you were acting with a lot of people that you'd acted with before, you were directed by a person who you'd been directed by before. So you develop a trust, you develop a rapport, you develop a relationship with these people that you act with. And uh, I suppose there's always a degree of difficulty, um, but you know, um, it isn't as hard as say the first time you went on stage, mm -hmm. no. Um, was it difficult to find a suitable cast for the play? Not really, because most of us, have, we've been together for, for a while, and even though there was, there was a cast of 14 people in it, that they're all from the locality and they're all part of the backstage group mm -hmm. and there are actually more people that we could have called on. So the casting of it was easy enough. The part I was playing was Michael the publican auctioneer and his wife. Um, and I think one of the sad themes in the play was just in Ireland at that time, the, the way that women had such a... a a, a, a place in, in society, they were very much pushed to the back of things. Um, their lives were quite hard, um, there wasn't a huge degree of respect and I think that was a kind of an enduring theme through the play. I mean, there's lots of sad moments but I think that one, the way that uh, Michael's wife was treated... Oh, I'll go to the printers when you're done. Don't be too long, I'll be going to the hairdressers when you come down. What? What's I? Nothing's on, only that it's six weeks since I had my hair done. Why didn't you get it done before this? I don't like rushing me dinner. <laughs> no one ever stopped you from getting your hair cut. No one, only four kids. The baby's asleep. Treated. Also the widow and the way she was treated as well. I think it was kind of quite telling of Ireland at that time. You know? Being from Longford, does it make it dif difficult or enjoyable doing the character? You've got to try and achieve an accent, and it's an accent. The Bull McCabe is traditionally played in a kind of a South of Ireland accent. So you have Cork, Kerry, and I don't normally speak with that kind of an accent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you've got to achieve that accent. But other than that, I think the fact that you're from Longford, you know, it doesn't really impact upon it very much. You'd often have to change your accent or require a new accent or require new mannerisms when you're, when you're playing a part. So the fact that I'm from Longford or I live in Longford, is, it doesn't really impact upon it one way or the other. Oh, yeah. Uh, as a director, what is your opinion on the film version of the field? Yeah, I, I loved the film version of the field. In many ways, Richard Harris was brilliant as the Bull McCabe, and John Hurt, who played the part of the bird, he, he was excellent as well, and Sean Penn, or Sean Bean, played the son. So th they were all fine actors in it, it was very well directed. And when, when a, a film like that is nominated for Best Actor in, for an Oscars, people sit up and, and, and they take note. But it Please, for my field. Just who would insult me by bidding for my field here in Carrick Thurmond? There might be outsiders, but... <laughs> But there were lovely scenes. The only fault I had was at the very end, I thought it was a weak enough ending where he's gone out. He was like, did you ever hear this guy, King Canute? King Canute was a guy who thought he could push back the sea and he was pushing back and Richard Harris is there standing um, and it, it's just that King Canute kind of style pushing back. It was the inevitability, life is going to come on top of you anyway. Is there any similarities or differences to your personality? and your character you played in the field? <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope I'm not all like, I hope I'm not totally 100% like the Bull McCabe, but uh, look, I suppose there's a little bit of us all in the character like the Bull McCabe, that selfishness, that greed, yeah. I don't think I'm like that. Yes. But I suppose, I'd say the Bull McCabe had a short fuse. I'd say he didn't suffer fools gladly. And uh, you know, 
Maybe I'm a little bit like that myself. You know, <laughs> so maybe that's one similarity. Ah. But, but within the play also you had um, the bull, there were tender moments in it, even though he's a rough, rough man. And he was prepared to kill for something that he believed yeah. in. No adulation of the multitude, but it, it's nice to be recognised, yeah. What is bull like in real life? Bull is probably the complete opposite in real life. Um, that he's he's stage character, you know. Um, can I say this without saying he's a very solid fella in real life. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, preparing the play for so many months, when the play was over, how did you feel? <laughs> Anticlimax would be the word. If, if you feel empty for a while and you're, you're thinking back, and you're also thinking back to situations that sometimes, could I have done that better? And you can always, no matter how long a play goes on, you'll always go back and you say, I could have done something better there with that. But um, you, you drop that and there's a new project comes along and you have something else to do, so there's no problem. Yeah. And can you uh, give us a brief of your accent that you use in the play? Like, give you a, a brief of it? Of my accent? Yeah, the, that I use for... You want, you want an example of yeah, something example, I said? Yeah, yeah. Oh gosh, let me try to think what my lines <laughs> were. Uh, something like... Uh, uh, you better go home to England where you came from by and I'm not fooling you by yeah. I am not fooling you by so you try and achieve this kind of sing song South yeah. of Ireland accent like you know the bull me knows what you're coming from like the back of your hand. Good one. <laughs> okay. Uh, thanks to meet you. Nice, nice to talk to you. Thanks. Thanks for spending your time for us. We uh, appreciate your kidding, kindness and openness. No, thank you. It's been my pleasure. Thanks for it. <laughs> well, uh, that's all. Uh, say that's thank you for taking... You're, you're welcome, Tommy. Thank you thank yourself. You. Thank you.